Right? I'm not concerned. What, what, what's happening is right here anyway. You know, I, I don't know why you're worried about the screen because whether the screens come up or they don't come up, the word of God is going to go out no matter what. Amen, the language right there. That's all there is to it. Isaiah, Isaiah in chapter 6 let us know that when King Isaiah died, things changed for him. He let us know that uh, indeed that while he felt like a man with unclean lips, I'm so glad that Isaiah's example is the fact that God uses those of us who have unclean lips. Do I have a witness here? I'm so glad that he didn't call on perfect people because quite frankly, there is no perfect person. And what he showed us is that he is able to take our unclean lips and he can clean them and he can make a difference. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that in my life he looked past my mistakes. He looked past every wrong place. I went every wrong thing I did and he gave me an opportunity to have another chance. Do I have a witness here this morning? Oh yeah, Isaiah thought that he wasn't worthy, but I came to tell you that God said that Isaiah was worthy. And that's why somebody here needs to understand that if folks are trying to drag you back to your past, they need to understand your past does not define your present. Your past does not define your future. Oh, he used Isaiah. He used Isaiah. And he let Isaiah know that, oh, Isaiah, I can handle your unclean lips. If you look at, the, at chapter 6 of Isaiah, he said, I can handle them. As a matter of fact, not only can I handle them, I'm going to use you. And I'm going to have you proclaim my word. And when you look at Isaiah chapter 6, what you see is that somehow Isaiah went from feeling like he wasn't worthy to saying to God, Lord, if you need somebody, send me, I'll go. If everybody else won't go, I want you to know that I'm happy to go. I'm determined to go. I'm looking forward to going for you. The book of Isaiah is similar to the to the books that we see in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. In the first 27 chapters of Isaiah, we see, uh, I'm sorry, first 66 uh, chapters of Isaiah, we see much of the unfolding, much like we do in terms of the number of books, like in the books of the Old Testament. And I'm sorry, I said 39, forgive me, 39 chapters that we see that the same is true when it comes to the Old Testament. And from 40 to 66, we see the rest of what Isaiah has to say. And I'm here to tell you that I'm so glad that today we are sitting in the second half of what Isaiah has to say. Because you see, the folks were looking for a Messiah and somebody has said to you more than once, I don't see Jesus in the Old Testament. Well, I came to tell you that it's extremely important that you look for him, not by the name Jesus, but I came to tell you that he's there. How do I know that he's there? Even in Genesis chapter one, he said, let us make man, let us make woman. He was there from the beginning. John uh, stretches out and says, if you don't believe that, just hopscotch over to the Gospel of John chapter 1. John said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. I've got a witness here this morning. And here we are in Isaiah, and Isaiah is saying the folks are looking for somebody. They call him a Messiah. He is the anointed one. They're looking for that one to come and to save humanity. And when we look at the third, 61st chapter of Isaiah, what we see is an amazingly beautiful rendition of God's word through the power of the Holy Spirit, which tells us that the spirit of the sovereign Lord was upon me. I'm going to pause for just a minute and tell you, if you've never had that experience before, I've got to believe that there's somebody in here who recognizes that in today, the 21st century, the spirit of the Lord does not come upon you. The spirit of the Lord is in you. And the spirit of the Lord guides you. And the spirit of the Lord gives you the remembrance that you need the spirit of the Lord is what stops you from saying sometimes what you'd like to say. Do I have a witness here? The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. And when you look at this text, the text 
from an exegetical standpoint is about, in other words, the interpretive standpoint, is about the importance of the Messiah coming. But I think it's important that you also know that it has application. If we were to look at this from a hermeneutic standpoint, meaning the, the, the deeper dive on this, you'll understand that it's also about us. It's about the church. And all through the pandemic, one of the things that I've been saying, even before the pandemic, is the church needs to speak up. The church needs to stand up. The church needs to be the church. The church has hurt too many people. The church has turned their back on too many people. The church has marginalized too many people. I came to tell you that this church is going to walk with people, stand with people, help people, work with people, lift people, encourage people, and help them to know that it's all going to be all right. We're walking this journey together. We're going to get this journey together. Therefore, the Spirit of the sovereign Lord, if you will, today is upon the church. I said before that the reason why the world is going nuts and crazy is because they've got nothing to hold on to. But I came to tell you that if you are a child of God, you may not be able to see him, but you ought to feel him every now and then. You ought to know that he's real. You ought to be able to feel him deep in your soul. You ought to be able to know that you are holding on to solid ground, solid opportunity, solid encouragement, solid joy, because that's who he is. Oh yeah, he gave the church, he gave the church, he gave the church a great opportunity to be the church. The church is different than the world. You see, the world will scandalize you. The church will support you. The world will, will be talking right and walking left. The church will walk right with you all the time because we know that we're all sinners saved by grace. We know that God took us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We know if we slip and fall, somebody's there to encourage us. Somebody is there to help us. Somebody is there lifting us up. That's what it's all about. The text tells us that not only is the Spirit of the Lord upon me, and I don't know about you, but when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you may not even speak in tongues, but there's still something that you're going to feel on the inside that's a little different. Do I have a witness here? Knowing that it's going to be all right after a while. That's what the old folks said when they knew that it was going to be all right. They didn't know how it was going to be all right. They just knew it was going to be all right. And that's us. They gave us that understanding. Don't worry about what you see. Understand that after a while and by and by, you can't just be looking at today. You've got to be looking down the road and know that he's taking care of everything. And every one of us, if the church is the church, then what are we supposed to do? It's right there in the text. He said, you're supposed to give good news to the poor. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody said, Pastor, you mean that we're supposed to deal with all the homeless and all that stuff? I got news for you. The church ought to have something to say about all the homeless on the street. The church ought to be doing its part, which is why we do our part. Amen belongs right there. But I need you to understand something else. It's not just those that are destitute. It's not just those that don't have a job. I came to tell you that there's some rich folks who are very poor. There's some rich folks who are poor in spirit. They are poor in understanding. They are poor. And though they have a whole lot of money, they do not have an anchor. And I don't know about you, I'm so glad that it's not about my bank account. It's about my spirit account. And because of my spirit account, I've got a foundation on which I can borrow from, knowing that it's going to be all right. He said, I've got to proclaim some good news. I came to tell you, my friends, there is good news in the Lord. Do I have a witness here this morning? Not only is there good news, there's good news that Jesus came. There's good news that Jesus healed. 
There's good news that Jesus fed. It's good news that Jesus did all the things that he did. But I need you to know that one of the things that he did is died on a cross for your sins and my sins. And the story doesn't end there. On his way out, he stopped long enough from dying to save one more that was on the cross. The Bible tells me that he went into the grave three days. But I heard early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And I want you to know that there's some good news about that. What do you mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. The good news is not only did he get up, he stayed up. And that what he's doing is sitting on the right hand of the Father advocating for you and me all the time. There's good news to those who are poor in spirit. He also said that he sent me to bind up uh, the brokenhearted. I don't know why the world uh, has to go poor on people that are already down. Why do you have to put your foot on somebody's neck? Why do you have to put a knee on somebody's neck? I came to tell you that if the church is the church, the church knows that its job is not to put a knee on anybody's neck. Somebody that's already broken hearted needs to know there is an anchor in Jesus Christ. That says, I bind up the brokenhearted, and that I'll proclaim freedom for the captives. What do you mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked the question because it says you'll be released from the darkness for the prisoners. I'm not going to finish all this today, but I just need to go this far. Are you with me so far? Here's what I need to do. He says, I want to proclaim freedom. You see, one of the things that I've known and that you know as well is that sometimes we carry our burdens with us all the time. That it might be a good day, but some of us are sure that somehow this good day is getting ready to turn bad. Because you see, Pastor, I just don't have good luck. I tried to tell folks they, that that's the problem right there. You're talking about luck. I'm talking about blessings. And what I know is that luck ain't going to get you anywhere, but blessings will take you everywhere. I've got a witness here I know this morning. The text tells us that the freedom that we're talking about is the freedom that helps us remember that we may be going through right now. And you've heard me say this from this pulpit many times over the last 16 years where I said for every one of us, one of three things is going on. You're either going into a storm, you're in the middle of the storm, or you're coming out of the storm. But I came to tell you, the one that takes you to the storm is the one that will get you through the storm. And when you talk about freedom, I came to tell you that there is something about knowing that craziness is going on all around you. But when you're a child of God, you recognize you can't control what's going on around you, but you can control your response to what's going on around you. And when you control your response, you've got some freedom. Do I have a witness here? That's why we shout when we shout. That's why we stand up and do a dance. That's why we clap. Because we know that it may not all be done right now. But I do know that after a while and by and by, everything is going to be all right. The text tells us to proclaim freedom from the captives. Let me help you understand who the captive is. Some of the captives show up to church every Sunday, but they're still stuck in Schlebrock lands. Somebody been hear me. If you don't know who Schlebrock is, just go look at Charlie Brown. There's a guy named Schlebrock that when he comes around, he's got a cloud of dust all around him, and his words are wowsy, wowsy, woo woo. I came to tell you right now, as a child of God, you need to get a new vocabulary. You need to understand that's what the folks would say. I'm doing all right. Folks said, I'm fair to Midland. I'm going to be all right because I know that God has got this thing. And when you are free as a captive, what you know is that whatever's going on around you will not define you and will not harm you. Let me walk with you for a minute. Let me walk with you for a minute. 
Sometimes your issues are within your own family. People that, that just want to keep you in a box. I came to tell you that if you already busted out of that box, stay out of that box. Don't let the family member define who you are. Stay out of that box. Keep on walking, knowing that you're all right, knowing that God is all right, knowing that he's given you another chance, knowing that you can make it, knowing that it's going to be all right. That is what it's all about. Don't be captive to what somebody else says. Finally, we put ourselves not only captive their time, that we're sitting in our own prison. Nobody put us there. We put ourselves there. And the truth of the matter is, somebody in this audience needs to know that no matter what you have been through, no matter what you have done, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, uh, and even though family and the world may try to put you back in prison, I want you to bust out and tell them that I am a child of God. You have no prison that can hold me. You have no way to keep me. I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on praising because I believe that God will muzzle the mouth of the evil one that's trying to keep me captive. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? If you're a witness, I want you just to stand and give God some praise right now. Just give God some praise right now. That's why I said, remain standing if you will. I, that's why I said this is a divine mandate. In other words, God didn't say you might. God didn't say I suggest. God says in his word, I want you to know this is what the sovereign Lord says. That means that you need to go do it uh, and do it with love, do it with joy, do it with perfect understanding that God will take care of you. I'll come back the next time to talk about the rest of this, but I came today to let you know that there is hope for the hopeless. There is peace, there is peace, there is encouragement. How many of you know there is joy? Pastor, I don't know how to pay my bills. I got news for you. I know what that's like. They ain't got nothing but pocket lint and nothing from that. But here's what I do know. You go to God, he has a way of moving on somebody's heart and telling them, you need to go take care of this. You need to go take care of that. Do I have a witness? And all of a sudden, something shows up that you didn't expect. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Before we do our song of invitation, I, would, I want Sister Emily to come. My sister Emily, every month we give a spiritual and mental health talk because we know we're going through amen? amen we know we need help and it's not just all about reading the bible and praying in the corner it's also about clinical help and i came to tell you that all of it goes together why is that preacher i'm so glad you asked because you see a person couldn't be a clinician if it wasn't for god giving them the opportunity to know what this is all about that's my, same, that's my same statement about the vaccine. Folks who don't want to get vac vaccinated, I came to tell you, who do you think God is separate from the world? God is the one that gave them the ingenuity to be able to develop the vaccine in the first place. So the vaccine came from God, and I came to tell you that God's going to have the last word on this as well. Sister Emily, you may be seated. Let's give Sister Emily a big hand of praise. God bless you.